Sure your mic's on, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and that actually is my uh, first announcement. I know, uh, so we'll be recording as we always have. Uh, we are thrilled that uh, we get to be on the uh, cable, uh, Fall River Cable, uh, and we welcome you um, to our chapel this time. Uh, thank you, Bruce, for always recording for us. So those that come up, please speak up. Uh, that's not going to be a problem for me. It's not going to be a problem for Jamie, but uh, if you're offering a prayer, uh, or uh, scripture. Uh, we, we don't have a sound system. I think we, I picked a scripture reader who can comment. Yeah, for that I'm that. confident of. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have others. And if we have to get a sound system, we, we will. Uh, but that will be mostly based on uh, recording because I think we can hear each other. This chapel is, I mean, it's one more time to thank Jane and uh, Christ the King and everybody, oh, and yeah. Tanya and the entire group that put this uh, together. Uh, every time I open this room, people look in and go, wow, this is really nice, and it is. So we are blessed to have this space and to have it transformed into a chapel. Uh, my treasurer is over there, and he would be pleased that our sanctuary switch didn't get flipped on trying to heat a room that you cannot heat. So uh, so this one we can, and I hope you're warm enough to let us know. Um, as far as announcements, uh, let's see. Uh, annual reports are due by Wednesday, January 18th. Uh, and that includes our pastor. Uh, Old Colony Baptist Association breakfast is Saturday, January 21st uh, at 9 a.m. up in Brockton, correct? Mm -hmm. we'll at the Messiah Baptist in Brockton. Messiah Baptist. We can get you more information as we go there. But today is the Messiah Sing at First Congregational at 3 p.m. up on uh, Rock Street. And that's a beautiful church. If you ever have not been in there, uh, this is an opportunity. Um, we do have our, uh, this Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. is the Reverend Doug Bixby, uh, who's going to be leading us in an open workshop. And we are absolutely uh, inviting everyone. Everyone is welcome to attend. Leaders, we very much want you there, but we want everyone. Uh, to have a chance to participate. We'll be in the gardener room, and if we get bigger than that, we'll move to the ramp room. Uh, trustees meetings the 15th, deacons meetings the uh, 22nd, uh, and then your church leadership day that you you are speaking at is Saturday, January 28th, up in Grottenwood, and we'll talk more about that as we get through. Yeah, the there, is a, there is a registration fee that includes lunch and things. If you would like to come and the registration fee is difficult for you, the church will pay it. Yep. Um, Actually, it's capped at $100, so if we have more than four members coming, the uh, fee goes yeah. down, and I think that counts. I think you probably want me to pay even though I'm speaking. So if three bacon. more people come, Jeff. Right. <laughs> bacon, bacon is not free these days, or eggs, or right. any, any other free right. product for those that are out there shopping. Uh, I believe those are all the announcements, uh, and we're just glad to have everyone here. So of that big slew, the one that I want you to keep in your mind is Tuesday at 6.30. Tuesday at 6.30, Tuesday after the branch supper. So come to the branch supper and eat. There'll be enough food. Is it first come? It's first come. It's first come. There will be enough good food. So come and eat at 4.30, you're welcome, but absolutely come afterwards at 6.30. Uh, Doug Bixby is going to be helping us figure out how to reconfigure the structure uh, of the church because right now we have I don't know 19th century bylaws that have been maybe updated a few times is that right yep. um, uh, uh, that anticipate a larger church than we have and we're gonna try to make that go away and create a structure that matches the size of the church uh, God has given us so that we can 
um, be faithful in this century and not two centuries. So, Tuesday at 6.30. Will you join me in the responsive call to worship that's printed in your bulletin? It comes from Psalm 145. I will read the parts in the Roman type and ask that you reply with the parts in italics. The bulletins are the uh, on the back table there if someone needs them. And if you would stand when you have it. Oh, we're gonna have some, uh, yep. we're gonna have some Christ the King worship coming up through the, <laughs> through the floor in this space. I will extol you, my God, my God and King. And bless your name forever and ever. One generation shall laud your works to another. And, and shall declare your mighty acts. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. All of your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. And all your people shall bless you. My mouth will speak God's praise. God is near to all who call to the Lord. Our opening hymn is Be Still for the Spirit of the Lord. It's on the front of your insert. Thank you. 
promise is what you get when the pastor makes the bulletin. This is why we have an admin who usually does it. Um, now is the time when we come together as a church to pray, so I will ask that you lift up your joys and concerns. Jeff is not coming around with a microphone. Okay. Jeff is just coming around. <laughs> which means he can help if I can't hear you, but for the most part, you want to speak loudly enough so that everybody can hear you, even unmiked. All right. You have paper in the Do have paper and so, like um, Oh, and it's the back of the prayer that I was looking for <laughs> last time. Wait, I don't want to write on that. <laughs> it's half of the prayer I was looking for last oh, time. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Sanctuary. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, as my tradition, I give you a Naomi update. Uh, we did have uh, Neil on uh, Friday. I skipped Monday with a little bit of a uh, sore throat. Uh, but uh, she was well. Her mind continues to uh, wander. She was worried about her car. She was wondering what we were going to do for Christmas. Uh, but uh, when I'm talking, we talk about uh, the meals and uh, she loves hearing about that when we, when we serve, when I take pictures, when I remember. Uh, and uh, I always have a tablet, so we keep, keep ourselves busy with that. And the, the folks are really nice. Right? Uh, so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a blessed time, and I always recognize that. Um, first for Tanya, she was out this past week uh, and dealing with family issues. And we don't have all the details for her, but that's Tanya, so she can, she can keep her details. So we will just uh, pray and lift her up. Um, and so that's uh, mine. Are there other prayers and concerns? i got to figure out how to do this. Prayers and concerns. Sherry, what would you like to share? Prayers for my husband, Tom, and my daughter, Caitlin, for some health um, things that came about. Okay. Um, so Tom and Caitlin. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, prayers for my auntie, Deborah. Um, she had a, ma a major stroke uh, last week, uh, so they pulled the plug. So she's just gonna, God's gonna take her uh, in time. Uh, thank yeah. you. May, may, that, may, that, may that be peaceful. Thank you. And we we talked. We're gonna move you to the uh, giving next a scripture week. scripture the next week. Okay, fine. Okay. Yep. Either way. Okay. Marlene, so next week. That's fine. I know you. I know. <laughs> so I'm the one that said that. Guy. Guy? Yeah, fine. Okay. I. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, you see, Somebody had to make a decision. Apparently, it was the guy, the rigid guy. Anyway. <laughs> I'm just you came up. <laughs> uh, yes, Jerry, what would you like to share? All right, I want um, you know, you want to pray for the people that live in the academy apartments. Okay. We give them the press. Amen. Appreciate that. We're glad, glad to have you back and uh, sharing with us. Um, I, yes. I would like to lift up Pastor Jamie and all the members of First Baptist Church and visitors for all the sick, for all the suffering, for all the homeless, for the dying, and for all the, those who are most in need of God's mercy. Amen. 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 Yeah, I was going to say, everyone, I'm writing everyone. everyone. <laughs> but there are those, there are those that are truly, truly, truly suffering yes. more than we are as we stand here in this warm room and in, in our clothing and um, full bellies, more likely, most likely. Yes, my name. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you for um, keeping my nephew Billy mm -hmm. in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Um, he's, um, it hasn't been smooth sailing for him, but he's keeping on trying mm -hmm. um, and making progress, Amen. which um, I'm just so grateful for. And I also want to say that he um, had a job interview this past Amen. week. Amen. So um, Amen. it is Fear huge prayers. progress Amen. and just thank you so much. When I get a word on it, I'll let you know. Amen. 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 Awesome. Awesome. Anyone else? Um, Jody's uh, <coughs> girlfriend, Lisa, do we know anything more? Nothing more. Um, so what we do know is um, that she was um, that she was in the ICU. Yeah. Um, and that she um, and that she was not um, that she was not conscious the last time that I heard. So for Lisa, who has worshipped with us uh, on a on a few occasions anyway, um, and who's a regular um, at our meals, um, we have another request from the meals, which is. Raymond, who's one of our um, unhoused people, 
um, it's more than a week now, but it's hard to get updates on someone who doesn't have a, a, a phone or mm -hmm. connections. I mean, he has connections in the community, but doesn't have, but yeah. Um, uh, he was found in his tent frozen, um, unresponsive. He was airlifted out, and no one knows what. Um, so we'll keep Raymond in our prayers. Um, this it, is it's so tough let me tell you people mm -hmm. it is so tough you see these people coming in and i'm out there i'm trying to make connections with them and just like this week where we had clients coming in mm -hmm. they had to get to the step and we had done the uh, same yes. thing with the week before with ray yeah. right he right. came in and he's all worried he was so happy to have a bed yeah oh i need to get in there can i do this can i do that and we arranged everything for him but you I mean it's a blessing to go down there and to see these people and to make these connections with them. Amen. You mean and Amen. just like Pastor Jamie says, you mean the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is alive in this church. Amen. This this man here <laughs> went to school with my children. Oh, and oh I, I haven't seen him in twenty five years. And your name? So my name is Owen. 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 So Owen. Thank, welcome, Owen. Owen. Welcome, Owen. Welcome, Owen. And, Thank you, family. And it's just to make these connections, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is definitely here amongst us. Amen. 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 Matthew is Matthew has been. I mean, we'll keep him in prayers for health. But little Matthew who had the surgery, what three? It can't be three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Now. I mean, the first time she she was gone. Julie was gone for a week, and we didn't know what was up. She had lost my card. She didn't text me to tell me what was going on. Um. So she came back, and poor little Matthew was just lying there with oxygen and looking, you know, like a doll. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's active and running yeah. around and barely constrainable in that giant room. Right. And so, so and praise yeah. God for, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Our yeah. medical community. For good, for, yeah, good for, for good healing. And, and amazing doctors, uh, our usual uh, uh, prayers for Sue Holland. Uh, and I'm glad people are making connections with her. You reached her, correct? I did. I got her on the phone, good. Um, good. and within, I don't know, an hour, uh, uh, someone walked in and said, "You talked to Sue Holland." So, <laughs> this is a small community, man. You can't have a conversation without someone knowing about it. <laughs> so true. So true. And Esther and Bob and Sue. And Gordon Claudette. And Gordon Claudette, I got. Anne, you're Anne. Anne and Bob. I just want somebody to go off in some street. Betty, we need to tell her we're in the chapel. Yep, yep. If that would oh, be. and Janice, we could keep in prayer for her right, continued yeah. healing. Yeah. And Jane. She had a surgery. Not this Janice. <laughs> Janice <Yeah. is> like that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, but we, we pray for you, too. Make sure you remember Donna, too. I see her at the Y a lot. Yeah, she was She's here. She's doing good. She was here last year. Week. Yeah. 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 Okay. She's just, um, when Donna isn't off. here, it's usually because she's, she got, she's, she's got an active something. life yeah, and is does. busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't worry. I don't worry about her. I don't want to say that. I shouldn't say that out loud. No. <laughs> Jane is Jane too. What's that? Jane. 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 Uh, where, uh, I think we've mentioned it last time, uh, and, her husband. and her husband, Dan, uh, were delivering meals too by working with her. Uh, two nieces, uh, they dropped by uh, during the brand supper, we back up the meal, and... Uh, yeah, and Dan's dementia is taking the path that dementia takes, which uh, is to say it doesn't get better, right? No, so we'll keep stone. him in prayer from now, you know, keep him in prayer every night. Um, what I used to pray for my mom for years, I prayed many, many more good days and not very many bad ones. Um, and I think over the course, I took care of her for 17 years, and I think um, she had a lot more good days than bad ones, mm -hmm. so. I think you know the last day was bad but other than that I think mm -hmm. I have photos from her you know within a couple days of her death sitting there you know sipping a, a, a eating a banana or sipping a yogurt drink with a fuzzy dog on her lap and a smile on her face so mm -hmm. so it's possible even with dementia yeah. to have that good time mm -hmm. and that's what I pray for Naomi as well. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. 
Oh, eternal God, loving God, God of light and God of joy, we bring you our prayers for the world. <clears throat> we pray for this community that we love, for all who live in this community. We pray for all who are sick or suffering, for all who are homeless, for all who are in need of your healing, your comfort, your mercy. We pray for your church, that we might meet the needs of all of the people in our community and throughout the world. We pray for this world that all people and all creation might know that they are your beloved children. And we pray for ourselves that we might remember that we are your beloved children. We pray for those who suffer that they might know your love for them and we pray that we might be bearers of your comfort. We pray for your creation that it might stay healthy and continue to nourish and nurture us. We remember those who have gone before us and we pray for, the, for those who are nearing death that they might be at peace in your love for them. We lift up uh, particularly Deborah um, for a peaceful passing, a peaceful transition. We lift up to you Esther, Jane and Down, Naomi, Sue Hong. We lift up Betty for continued health. We lift up Tanya's family that there might be healing. We lift up Tom and Caitlin. Uh, we lift up Raymond and that you might heal him. We lift up Lisa for the same. Janice that her foot might continue to heal and she might get the mobility that she needs. We lift up Ed and Claudette, Bob and Ann and Betty uh, that they might know that um, that they might know that they are loved even though they can't come and be with us uh, every day in the winter and that they might have the ability to come and worship in this community that they love and that loves them. And Father, we lift up to you Cindy and Dave and Leon that they might have many, many more good days and not very many bad ones. In one baptism with Christ and blessed by your Holy Spirit, we praise and give you thanks, Holy One, for giving us spirit and breath. As Jesus heard you speak to him in his baptism, may we also hear you calling us your beloved through Jesus Christ, your Son and our brother. Amen. Amen. And now as Jesus taught us to pray, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Ooh, did we think through tithes? We did. Somebody thought through tithes and offered. <laughs> Um, so, uh, in this room, as in the other room, we come before God and we bring ourselves. We bring uh, the talents that we have, we bring our love and our willingness and our skill, and we bring our resources so that God might continue to be worshipped here in this church and here in this community. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a willing sacrifice and offering.
upon us from day to day and from season to season. And we return to you what we can. So we ask that you bless these gifts and that you bless us, that they and we might be your light shining in this community and your love where it is most needed. We ask this in the most precious name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our hymn is Christ is the World's Light. by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him and a voice from heaven said this is my son the beloved with whom I am well pleased Amen. 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 May God have a blessing to the reading of the word thank you Oh, now here's where you figure out just how nearsighted your pastor is. <laughs> uh, John has pretty much the same reaction uh, to as I would if Jesus came to me and said, Pastor, would you baptize me? I'm not the one to be baptizing you. You're the one who's supposed to be baptizing 
me, it seems like the wrong way round, doesn't it? There's an old model of pastoring, the one that I grew up with, uh, in which the pastor is kind of up on a pedestal. Um, did you grow up with pastors um, like yes, that? Yes. Almost yes. always men. <laughs> Think of them wearing a dark suit underneath their dark robe. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, the pastor is almost a stand-in for God, sort of the priestly model, right? And although now I know that there was probably a lot going on under the surface for all of those men, mostly, some women, sprinkled in. Um, there was this projection of perfection, yeah? Um, there was no admission of sort of a shared humanity. You'd never get a pastor standing up in front of a church and saying, I know what despair feels like. I know what anger but church, it's the only way I know how to pastor with any integrity. It's the only way that I know how to pastor and keep my soul intact is not to stand in front of you and pretend that I'm some image of perfection. Put me up on a pedestal I just have farther to, farther to fall from, right? The higher the pedestal, the, the bigger the fall. I'd rather stay grounded to start off with and admit I've got all the same troubles you have. I've been trying to follow God my whole life, yeah? Most of you? Yeah. And I've come some distance. Man, I, I really have. Believe it or not, what you're seeing here is better than what you would have seen 20 or 30 years ago. Certainly uh, more. Um, because I do know what anger feels like. It feels terrible to carry around inside you. Do you know what that feels like? I know what despair feels like. The idea that you can't see the future from here, or the future you can see is so terrible you don't want to look. Do you know what that feels like? And I've come from a place where I was living there, church. I have lived in that spot. Have you lived there? Yes, Lord. Yes. I have lived in that spot. Praise God, I don't live there anymore. How about y'all? Hallelujah. Yeah? I've moved from that spot to a spot where when I feel anger now, or when I feel despair now, I catch it and say, Oh, that's my old friend anger. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I let's let's drop that. That feels terrible. It doesn't take me that long to drop it now. I still get it. Hopefully I'm on a path from where I was to some place that God is still calling me to. And hopefully as I live my life, I have more and more spirit in me and I become closer. I'm not, I know I'll never get there. But I'll become closer and closer to, to the way Jesus lived his life. To, to be, I want to be, I want to be Ronnie Lanier by the time I die. I want to be so open to the spirit. Uh, Ronnie Lanier was the woman I talked about who was, a, who was a woman, a black woman pastor back when, <clears throat> wow, all of those things were really, really hard. Um, uh, and who was a missionary for us and who you could walk into a room the size of our sanctuary and have her over in a corner. And he would walk into the room and think, oh, there's light and love coming from that corner. Let me go towards it. <laughs> that was Ronnie Lanier. I want, by the time I'm 80, for people to walk into a room and think, oh, there's love over there. Let me head in that direction. I am not there yet. I know I'm not there yet, church, but that's, I know how far I've come. I hope that's where I'm headed. I would slowly suffocate. I feel like my soul would shrink if I tried to pastor from a place in which I pretended to be perfection. The only way I know how to be authentic is to say, I am in this journey with you. We all know this journey from one place to another. So in Luke, I'm gonna, I, 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 we're, we're, our passage today is from Matthew, but I'm going to pull a little bit of Luke. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the gospel tells us that Jesus increased in wisdom mm -hmm. and in years, in divine and human favor. Jesus increased in wisdom and in years. He didn't just get older, but he actually went on a journey in which he learned things. And he increased in divine and human favor. 
In other words, he kept making decisions throughout the first 30 years of his life that opened him up to be fully um, in line with God's plan, with God's call for his life. At Christmas time, we spend so much time picturing Jesus as this perfect little baby hmm. who appears in our manger <laughs> magically. <laughs> I think we forget that Jesus came into the world in the normal way, which is kind of scary and really messy. Um, and that he needed to learn his alphabet, his alphabet, right? And that he needed to learn how to walk, how to crawl, how to walk, how to move through the world. And that he, as a child and then a young man, had to make choices and look to see what the consequences of those choices were. We like to remember that Jesus was wholly divine, but he was also wholly human. Mm. And we like to forget about that human piece just to focus on the God piece. I actually think it's more spectacular that a human being, a real human being, not some theater of a human being, we are told that God emptied God's self mm. to become Jesus. God emptied God's self to become Jesus, meaning that that little baby was a human being with all of the vulnerabilities, with all of the hearts, with all of the choices that every single one of us has. And he had to grow in wisdom and grow in favor the way the rest of us did. Is that how you normally think of Jesus? Mm -hmm. But that's what the gospel tells us. That's what the Bible tells us. That's what Paul tells us. This is consistent throughout the New Testament. Testament that Jesus grew in favor with God until he gets to this point where he comes to the Jordan River. Now John had been standing on the banks of the Jordan River. We're probably actually standing in the muddy Jordan River, uh, wide and shallow and brown with mud. Have you been there? No. Yeah, no? <laughs> Go, if you can. If you get three dimes to, to rub together, it's probably more than three dimes these days. <laughs> That's a trip worth taking. I went with a bunch of congregationalists and Episcopalians. So they all stood on the banks and looked at the river and thought, oh, there's a river. Because uh, for them, baptism um, is, is a meaningful thing, but it's, a, it's, it's water up here on the forehead. And I'm a Baptist, so I rolled my pants up as much as I could, and I threw myself into the river. And I'm looking at the banks at a bunch of uh, pastors and priests thinking, well, I don't have anyone to baptize. <laughs> <laughs> I took a little bit of that water home with me, and everyone I baptized for a couple of years got some of it. Wow. You don't want it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, John was standing in the Jordan River offering a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. That's what the gospel tells us. Um, but uh, Josephus, who's a, a non-biblical writer, but a, an historical writer, tells us that John the Baptist knew perfectly well that baptism wasn't some um, magical mechanism in which you start off with sins and someone dips you and you come back up and you don't have sins. It's not a magic wand, right? What is baptism? Symbolic. Symbolic? Death. Death. Burial and resurrection. Death and resurrection. There's someone who's really good at Sunday school classes. <laughs> she really is. She comes to all the Bible studies. <laughs> it's a symbolic death and resurrection with Christ. Right? Um, so it is not magic. It is a recognition of what God has already done in and through us. Yeah. It's a symbolic death and resurrection. Do I ever offer a private baptism if Phil says, I'm really embarrassed and I don't want to have to go into the water by myself? Sue just was baptized. Did I say, um, let's, I know sometimes you have anxiety. Sh should we do this in private behind closed doors? Did I offer that? No, I didn't. Why? 
because we want everyone to see. Because we want everyone to see. It's a public declaration. Yes. It's a public declaration, and it's not just a public declaration, but it's a public sharing. It's a communal thing, so that when you come back up out of that water, it's not just an individual recognition of what God has done for you. It is. But it's also a communal recognition that we have all been baptized in Christ Jesus. We have all been baptized and we have all been raised. And therefore, we are all beloved children of God. Amen. 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 Now, I saw a photograph of myself yesterday morning. When I looked at that photograph, do you think I thought, that's a beloved child of God? When you see pictures of yourself, what do you normally think? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw a photo of myself and I thought, am I really that fat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like, I'm like, Sherry's right. I should keep makeup on my face. <laughs> no, 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 no. She, she complimented me the one time I had makeup on my face. I'm making it into something. I'm not putting that on here. I make that in something different in my head, right? <laughs> right. Um, I look at a photo of myself, and I don't think that's a beloved child of God. Mm. I look at a photo of myself and I make exactly the same face I make you made when I asked you what you what do you see in, in a photo of yourself? Do you usually look at it and think, wow, that's Luce takes enough selfies that she might. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of us. <laughs> I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you something about Luce. This was a photo Luce had taken, and it didn't take me that long to get to, to get from, wow, who is that fat old lady back in the corner? <laughs> to no, that's a beloved child of God. Do you know why she takes photos? Sometimes you can tell if the person who's taking the photo likes you or not. Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Whenever I see a photo that Luz has taken, there are people who take photos and I think, that person doesn't like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but whenever I see a photo of Luz, I think she loves everyone she takes a photograph of. Amen. She really does. And it shines through the photo. You can almost see that she's thinking, Amen. I, I want to take this photo of these beloved children of God. I'm not sure she light. says those words to herself every time. But that's what I feel when I see Luz's photo. Eventually, when I saw the photo of myself, it took me a second. <laughs> it took me a second. It's easier to see God in the people next to us than it is to see God mm. in ourselves. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we look at other people and we and it's hard to remember that they are also beloved children of God. But honestly, for myself, I work on remembering that I'm a beloved child of God. Because I know the ways in which I fall down. I know the ways in which I have feet of clay. I know the ways in which I have fallen short of the glory of God. Anyone here unclear on those things for themselves? Mm -hmm. No. No. But you've all also been baptized into Christ's death and into Christ's resurrection. Which means that your sins are forgiven. But also means when we look at this, when we look at this passage, when we look at Jesus's uh, at this passage, when we look at Jesus's baptism, it's a very short passage. Did you know? Does it spend a lot of time on sin? No, just kind of John saying, "What are you doing?" <laughs> it's kind of implied. It's not really that much about forgiveness of sins. It's mostly about this communal feeling that we are beloved. Children of God. Yes, we are. We're beloved children of God. Amen. So when you look at a photo, even if it wasn't Lucy, it's easier with Lucy's photos. She re really, it's a difference. It's it's a it's a it's a way of seeing people and loving them and having that love come through in that frame. That's what I got from Lucy's photos. So Lucy, if you if you don't if you don't if you're not on board with that, you let me know. But I. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Lucy's sitting there going, I really hate everybody. But... <laughs> Never. <laughs> nah. No, that's not loose. That's not loose. Mm -hmm. So, 
what does it mean that Jesus stood? Can you, notes, why did I even bother? <laughs> what does it mean that Jesus, that Jesus stood with us on the banks of the Jordan River? What does it mean that Jesus stands with us in our baptism? It means that God is not some remote creature. God is not just in the beautiful sunset or sunrise over the ocean or on the mountaintop, but that God, the central tenet of Christianity is that God loved us so much that God emptied God's self to be with us. Amen, church? Amen. Amen. God emptied God's self to be with us so that God doesn't just stand above us the way God could. I was going to say the way God should, but no. God decided that God shouldn't stand above us, but instead empties God's self to stand with us in the Jordan River, in the baptismal font, uh, in the ocean. Hey, if you haven't been baptized, there are options. <laughs> I do ocean baptisms. <laughs> um, uh, not this time of year, though. The latest ocean baptism I've done is October in Boston. Um, the earliest I've done, I believe... March. Wow. Ooh. Late March. In uh in the tidal pool. So it's ocean, but in a protected off castle uh, castle island uh in, in Dorchester. So there's a there's sort of a, a a breakwater there so that you're not having waves hit you. Yeah, the first time anyone asked me for an ocean baptism, I said yes out here, and on the inside I was going, it's supposed to be a, sim oh, man. Supposed to be a symbolic death and resurrection, not an actual one. <laughs> but we did fine, and now I'm comfortable with it. Now I love it. Beloved children of God, when you walk through your life, as you go from where you were to where you are, you've, as you've been, come from where you were to where you are, and as you go from where you are to where God is calling you to, how do you make your decisions? Talked about this a little bit last time. How do you make your decisions? I still ask myself a question that I was taught to ask in Sunday school. Did we talk about that last time? What's that question? What question do people wear in four letters on a bracelet on them? What would, what, would Jesus Jesus what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? If you're walking through your life on a daily basis, the easiest question to ask in any moment is, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do is not a remote question about what some all-powerful entity who created the world would do. What would Jesus do is a question about a real human being, holy and mind, Holy human. As limited as we are with bodies like we have, with thumbs and fingers and toes and, to and feet that probably hurt when he walked too mm. far in a day, mm -hmm. and someone who didn't much oh, like being oh. like woken up from a nap. Do you remember the boat scene? Yes. <laughs> someone who got tired and hungry the way we do. Someone who loved the way we do and mourned when John the Baptist was killed by Herod. A real human being, not a theater, uh, not a theatrical human being, but an actual honest-to-goodness human being who also opened himself up fully to be God and human at the same time. That's the central tenet of Christianity. That Jesus was wholly human and wholly divine, and that God stands with us in our humanity to save us because we are God's beloved children. Yes. So when we walk through our days and ask, What would Jesus do? Yes. It is not some unreachable question at the other end of the earth. When we walk through our days and ask, What would Jesus do? We are asking, something attainable, something possible. From where I am standing now, what would Jesus do? Not hop to another country. 
I have the option of taking a step forward or taking a step backward or saying a particular word or giving someone a hug. What would Jesus do is a real question about someone who had a real, limited, vulnerable body the way you do. And I think that's all you need to go forward into the future. I think that's all we need is to be able to every moment, every day, remember that the image that we first have that is not kind of our of our fellow, uh, uh, she, she's going to get me a photo of me, of me doing that. <laughs> and I'm going to look back and say, what was I possibly saying with my hands? <laughs> now, uh, now I'm hyper aware she won't be able to get any photos at all. <laughs> uh, as we go forward, what would Jesus do is a real question that we can hold on to and remember that image of God coming and saying, you are my beloved. You are my beloved. And in you I'm well pleased. Yes. Amen, church. Amen. 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 I wonder what that sermon was. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for another time. Uh, it, never, it never works out that way. <laughs> but I like this. It gives me more, it gives me, le- I don't have to be stuck at a microphone. Uh, yeah, it's less, less, less with the aisle, though, but, it, but at least I can get it in front of the... Um, our closing hymn is When Jesus Came to Jordan. <laughs> Serve God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.